welcome to another segment of Bleeding Cold Chatter, where I get a bunch of my writers together on Skype and we talk about nerdy things. We have recorded two segments already today, and now we're getting into the fun parts. We've been positive for like the last hour and a half. Why would you want to be positive? Being positive is lame. Let's be negative and talk about worse stuff. My name is Caitlin Booth. I am the head film writer here at Bleeding Cool, and I am joined by Bill. Hey, I'm Bill Waters. I do TV and film writing and whatever the porgs tell me. You can find me on Twitter at BillRW and the number three. Uh, Rafe, Rafe, look, Rafe, look, I'm with Television Beat at Bleeding Cool. You can find me on Twitter at OldManGeek88. And Addy. I'm Addy Tantamit. I write the Look at Moves column, which usually covers movies and TV and very occasionally comics. You can find yeah. me on Twitter at Look at Moves. So we just, I, I'm, this is one of those times where I'm going to recommend that you go back and watch a previous episode before you watch this one. Because we're going to be talking about the worst TV shows of the year. And in the previous one, I got the extreme entertainment of watching Bill and Ray react to the fact that Addie named Twin Peaks as one of his favorite TV shows of the year. And now we're immediately recording our worst TV shows because both of them are still riled up about it. <laughs> so watch our oh, best oh. watch our best of TV segment first and then jump back to watch this one cuz I want to hear let's go with Bill first. Well, let's kick off with the whole thing that this makes is really cool is that it highlights that different people take very different things away from movies, from television, from comics, what they what speaks to them, what they think is good, what they think is bad. And that's great. As Caitlin does often uh, a great quote that she often says, it's OK for other people to be wrong. That's fine. But you can uh, have your wrong opinion. <laughs> yeah. God bless America. <laughs> Horns, it's what's for dinner. Um, but they go crunchy. They do. Um, for mine, probably. Uh, all right, fine. Um, <laughs> do it. Do it. For my and worst, worst round series. Round one. For, fight. for me, round, worst series goes in with the worst disappointments. I, um, uh, and I'm an old fart. I watched Twin Peaks the first time around. I loved it. Um, and to be clear, I loved Twin Peaks until the completion of the main mystery. Who killed Laura Palmer? Once that was solved, they then had to fill... You know, it's kind of like what happens. You have your arc and then it continues. It's like the last season of Babylon 5. It's the series was done. Now they were like, oh, crap, we need to come up with more filler. And it was never really that satisfying after the discovery of, of the killer. And but, you know, given 20 years, wherever it's been to kind of recover from that. And it's like, all right, now we're thinking, yes, more Twin Peaks, David Lynch at his awesomeness. And to be honest, the first episode I thought was kind of great. It was a little bit, it was weird. It had all that great Lynchian vibe. And then from there, it, I think we had four episodes of Agent Cooper staring at something in the corner. Um, it was just, if I wanted to watch Eraserhead, uh, I would go back and watch Eraserhead rather than episode eight, um, which was funny because online people will scream about it's German expressionism and all this. And it went right back to my film school days of uh, there is a point in time where things, you know, especially for people who are intellectual in nature, that you're expected to like indie films just because they're indie films. And <laughs> if you're not, you're a heretic. Nope. If you, you can be an artist, but if you take a bunch of crap, put it in a brown paper bag, light it on fire, and people step on it, that's not an art installation. It's just burning crap in the middle of a room. And that really metaphors wonderfully for me for Twin Peaks. So, uh, Ray, what do you think? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How are the people? Bill, thank you. I appreciate the tag out. Um, I guess Cheers. I'm going to make this more of a rhetorical question. Um, so how many great artiste checks is David Lynch going to get to write off of Mulholland Drive and Blue Velvet? I'm just, oh, just, kind, of, just kind of curious. I'll give him Dune. Um, I'll give him Dune. Oh, no, I absolutely will give him Dune. I guess my thing is this. Um, you're not artistically brave when you strong arm Showtime to give you everything you want. Because you're essentially making a movie that Showtime is essentially putting out there, and you're making it as an 18-hour-long movie that you're dividing into episodes. Right. I found David Lynch's Twin Peaks more brave when you are creating art within the context of what is the normal network environment, which he did. And, Bill, I agree with you. I still stuck with it after the murder was solved because I really got caught up in the whole sure. mythology, the supernatural aspect of it. 
Now let's flash ahead a whole bunch of years. For some reason, David Lynch gets all of the quote unquote credit for Twin Peaks and things people don't like, either it gets shifted to Showtime or worse, to Mark Frost. Where, to be honest with you, I may not like what Mark Frost has done with Twin Peaks and especially with the characters and the books and things like that, but at least I feel like on some level Mark Frost gives a shit about him. Uh, David Lynch, I feel like it's, I'm going to go back to Twin Peaks. Mark, you get five episodes and I get 13 to put up whatever I dreamt about the night before. And I get to hit on Monica Bellucci and guess what I get to do? I get to abuse women physically and mentally for eight episodes because I got to be honest with you to David Lynch who isn't watching this if you're trying to send the message we got it 12 movies ago now it just seems like you have a problem with female characters and female representation because there wasn't a single woman represented well in 18 hours of your grand masterpiece so at the end of the day I got 18 hours of Lynch masturbation tied around my memories of characters that, to be honest with you, if you're not going to do anything with them, then be a real artist and create something new. Yeah. Don't go back. Don't go shoveling dirt on my memories of a show because you need to be an artist. You made a contractual obligation with me 27 years ago. You need to fulfill it or move on. Well, That's simple. I think but I think, of, sorry, go ahead. But, but I just want to say, but I think with David Lynch, it's one of those instances where because he was great 25 years ago, we'll just excuse anything he does now. We'll reach into the deepest, darkest annals of film school to justify sometimes just some dumb shit he does that we would never let anybody else get away with. But again, because he made a racer head and it was cool, we still kind of have to praise him in 2017. I love Lynch. Twin Peaks was nothing to brag about. <coughs> Kevin Smith uh, is the exact same way. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, that's a whole other conversation. But you know he's what? He's a great. He's yeah. great on a stage, not as a director. But you know what? Like for him, Clerks, Clerks Two, some of those. For me, I enjoyed some of those. But then went to see what was it, Walrus or whatever it was recently, uh, and I'm like, Tusk and Red Tusk. State. and it's like, and I'm like, I had to go back and watch some of the older ones because I'm like, did I actually? Yeah, I like those. What the hell happened between there yeah. and here? And that's where people, to your point about giving unlimited license, and it feels almost like when I was really enjoying that first episode of the 2017 Twin Peaks and you know what you're sitting there, you know, kind of smiling and enjoying, ah, these are great, you know, Lynchian scenes, you know, kind of things extended things, holding on a scene for too long and a totally empty screen holding it. It's kind of like a, to be edgy. He could have done that. He makes his point and then he go, doesn't have to continue to use that same thing. He can go into a shorthand and still kind of deliver that same message. But after a while, when you have another scene of of Cooper being just stock still and you've frozen camera on him, I mean, to after fashion, it moves from being, like you said, from artistic to just being lazy. It's an yeah. editor not telling them that, you know what, we could trim these five minutes. You know, some of these episodes were 12 minutes of basically static images that could have yeah. been trimmed in places, still give that very much more expansive breadth than anybody else is ever going to get. But some of these were just, come on, how many other series, like uh, was it a season or so ago of um, Walking Dead, where the big thing was the storyline is never advancing. You're never yep. getting anywhere. You're bouncing yep. from cluster of people to cluster of people, but your main arc just is spinning its ass in place. And for me, that's kind of was really its biggest thing with Twin Peaks is boiling it really down is one, one, people were far too proud of him for being an artist. I'm like, no, it was just crap. Uh, but beyond that, it was more like, let's get moving. You've only got so many episodes yep. and he's kind of, it felt to me that he was cheating, really delivering any kind of playoffs, uh, payoffs, whether it be, we went through all this just to get to that final scene. That's a loop back time loop again. That's to, yeah. to me, that came off as a little bit cheating. So I felt like I never, I, I endured all of this. At least when we endured the first twin peaks at the end, we got some sort of resolution yep. this time. We got nothing. For me. And, 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 and don't get me wrong. Look, if I was in Lynch's shoes, I would love for somebody to pay me millions of dollars to ha take my YouTube playlist and have them play live every end of every episode that I was directing. I would love that. But it's not art. You're just hanging out with your friends and you're getting paid to do it. You're essentially Twin Peaks was like a Lynchian Ocean's Eleven. Everyone got paid to hang out, 
be friends and brag and brag about how great it was to be in the presence of David Lynch. But at the end of the day, all everyone ever seems to say about it is, well, it's whatever you take out of it. Well, I get that. Isn't that pretty much every damn project that comes out there? That, that's mother. Yeah. If that's your standard answer, then basically what you're saying is, I don't really have an answer, but I'm going to make you feel bad if you don't get it. Yeah. And that's the other thing with Twin Peaks, too. It's this backlash of, well, if you don't like it, that's because you don't really love Lynch. You don't get him. You're not understanding the deep nuances. No, I think I do. Maybe he just sucked this time. Yeah. Possible. You know what? Actually, you you mentioned mother, and you know, she says she said it as a joke. But for me, I went. You know, I just recently actually went to watch it, and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm sorry. maybe it's you know, <laughs> Caitlin has different views. I love me my horror movies. Caitlin doesn't, so I'm like, all right, maybe I'll get something from this. And I sit down and watch it. And I'm like, there's a point at which again, whenever again, going back to film school, you have your film students, they have their senior projects, and they're just trying to be artistic. And when you have characters that are made that are called like him and woman and that i'm like no you're just being a pretentious fuck and it's not clever and it's i will get into this when we go to movie section i'm like <laughs> that's but I for, for me that say. was the whole sort of is an it's an if it's an artist being overly indulgent and a population allowing them to do so simply because well it's artsy that means it's cool and now that that's me sorry end of line Oh, no, that was extremely entertaining, and I'm so glad I got to watch it. <laughs> wait, wait, uh, damn it. One more thing. Bill, you reminded me of this, too. Lynch is such the artist that he had no problems playing the savviest businessman move in the world. He basically backed away from Showtime and let all the stars from Twin Peaks start bashing Showtime and bashing his artists. It was a brilliant move. It was a dirty, nasty, but like business-related cutthroat move. But it was a business move. I respect them for it. But again, we, we sometimes we always think of David Lynch as the artist. No, he likes a paycheck, too. So, again, I think we, we need to keep that in into consideration, too. I think he loved coming back to Twin Peaks. I yeah. think it also got his name out there a lot more in a lot of new, newspapers and websites that may not be, let's say, covering his newest movie. So I think he gets a benefit from it, too. Nostalgia pays nicely. Mm, that it yeah. does. Which it kind of goes to, I'll touch on is like, while that one hit me bad because it's just, um, it was so disappointing. Um, there's really no lack of shitty TV this year. I mean, between, yeah. you know, uh, between Training Day, Inhumans to a certain extent, Iron Fist, um, genre, some of the genre stuff this year has just not been good. Um, and kind of, I, I, you were t what reminded me of it was that you mentioned Nostalgia Factor. Again, there you've got you got networks that are shaking the trees, going through the old dump, uh, dumpster bins, going, "What do we still have rights to?" So we can rehash yeah. it because, golly, you know, if we just slap the name on it, get some people and throw them in the same situations, it'll be funny again. That doesn't work out that way. We really needed a Taken series, really. Um, yeah. Now there's 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 a, a plethora of bad ones. Twin Peaks for me was mostly just because of associations for how good I remember the original having been. And that does come into consideration. Uh, I'm assuming you've said what your have you said your piece, Ray, or do you have any dishonorable mentions you would like can, to add? Can I tell you the sad part was up until really going to this recording, it there was a tie because I have to say the mist on <laughs> Spike. Really, you, I think you're the only person I know who has watched that show to completion because I was actually excited no, about it. I, I got to be honest with you, I, I I kept my promise in the original recap. I promised whoever was following the recap that I would give it through episode five. I never abandon a project, and that's what I discussed in my post today about the postmortem on the mist. This show was it sold me on the idea of it because I was yeah, like, it, this would work as a li again limited series. Then by the end of it, you realize. It didn't learn anything from Under the Dome. Not a damn thing. When you start no longer being under the dome, people don't give a shit. When they were going to have to move this to an area where it was not going to be missed. That's the only way they could have stretched it. And they started to do that at the end. And at that point, I'm like, you have no idea what the hell you want to be. None. And it sucks because you had Francis Conroy and Dan Butler doing some amazing acting. But they were so good. It made you realize just how badly everybody around them sucked. <laughs> I mean, it just was, it was like Cinemax acting to like major Oscar acting. That <laughs> just was the big difference. It, it was, it was pain, but yeah, missed secondary disappointment. That's too bad. What about you, Addie? 
Now that you've listened to these two go off on a nice long rant about your favorite TV show, you are not allowed to rebuttal. I want to hear some negativity from you, buddy. What didn't you like this year? Negativity. I have negativity. I have three terrible shows that I can't stop ranting about. Okay, so so you have two dishonorable mentions that you can slightly rant about, and then one that you're allowed to rant about. Oh, okay. I think the biggest rant is probably Iron Fist. Because okay. that is the most wrong-headed way of doing a show called Iron Fist. Because it's it because you would want to see a martial arts show with martial arts fight. Instead, we get tedious scenes of corporate backstabbing stabbing and the, and this brother and sister that you honestly do not begin to give a shit about. And <laughs> about them trying to take the company away from him. Who gives a shit? This is a show called Iron Fist. It's not a show called Iron Corporate Politics. <laughs> and it's written by people who obviously do not understand corporate politics. You know, my family's in business. They're in banking. They, they do all this stuff. And none of this rings true, uh, true in this show. And why do we care about them taking over a business when we're supposed to watch a show about this blonde kid named Danny Rand be the be- uh, who's supposed to be the best martial artist in the world? I mean, what was the fucking point of that? Not to mention that all of the martial arts fights are completely inept. I mean, Finn, I felt sorry for Finn Jones. It's obvious that one, he was miscast. Two, he didn't. Ha- they, there wasn't any time for him to train properly or to fight I, properly. I honestly put most of that on the secondary because having met him, he's very, he's very passionate and he's very. He obviously really cares about the character. I, I honestly put a lot more on the showrunners and the rush schedule and the fact that he didn't have any time to learn his choreography than I do on him personally. It's not the it's not the actor's fault. Okay. And, and, no. and, it's, and, you know, and, you know, it kind of leads directly into Defenders because it's almost the same, a continuation of the same show. And so much of Defenders is just dumb. The writing is just dumb. And the, the fights are idiotic. It's like Defenders opens a martial arts fight in the dark that's so choppy and you can't even see what in the fuck is going on. And it and the climax of the defenders, the final fight scene in the tunnels with Daredevil and all those people, is again in the dark where you can't see what the fuck is going on. And it's just completely convoluted. And and you know the problem with uh, with um, the defenders is the same problems with the second uh, second season of Daredevil because it had the same showrunner. And so and so it had a lot of ridiculous hokey shit because the hand has always been this stupid. A stupid cod Asian orientalist concept where they can't even tell the difference between Chinese or, ja- uh, Chinese or Japanese and it's a hodgepodge of mystic ninja bo- Yeah, Dario. how do you make the concept of a mystical ninja death cult boring? Good job, <laughs> Netflix. You managed to pull that off. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's like uh, yeah, it's like uh, it's like Netflix seems to be the place where terrible Marvel shows go to be seen because uh, because it's le- because it's like well, okay, that's a waste of Daredevil. That's a waste of Luke Cage. That's a waste of Jessica Jones, and uh, and at least the writers seem to know, uh, seem to understand that Iron Fist, the show, was lame. So they spend the entire uh, series basically uh, saying how lame Iron Fist is. It's like uh, it's like you're kind you're kind of throwing your own show under the bus. That's such a bizarre thing. And uh, and you know, so I tend to lump Iron Fist and Defenders as a single show, and it is absolutely fucking awful. And you know, my my honorable mention is the Inhumans. Now yeah. that is staggering in its ineptitude. It's that the writing is just flat and dull. And the, I tried to watch the pilot. I couldn't be bothered to watch the rest of it because the direction is also flat and dull. There were no interesting images. There was no interesting camera angle. The pacing was just completely dull. I've seen stage plays that are better paced and better staged than the Inhumans. It's a, it's like they hired somebody who was cheap. That's how, what it felt like. I'd never heard of this director before. I think he was Dutch or something, and he was, and he didn't seem to be very happy with what he'd done with it. And a lot of the, the filming and the composition seemed to be just plunking the camera anywhere and just having the actors in front of the camera. There was nothing interesting going on visually on that show, and there was nothing interesting going uh, going on with any of the characters. They were all complete cliches. 
And, you know, Black Bolt has got to be the most pointless, uninteresting character you've ever tried to make the lead of a show. The guy can't even talk. And so, he, and so he suddenly you're immediately removing anything an actor can do. He can barely express himself. And, uh, and so, but not being able to talk does not mean an actor cannot express themselves. Yeah. See shape of water. Right. Exactly. And they didn't give him anything to do in the script. So you have a whole bunch of actors in, in Inhumans who are basically struggling to sell any of this stuff. And it's just completely half-baked. The entire show is half-baked. And I suppose the, great, uh, the thing we can be grateful for is that it pretty much kills off Inhumans for TV and movies for the foreseeable future. Because I never personally thought the Inhumans worked that well as a concept other than as supporting characters in Fantastic Four anyway. The whole point of trying to sell in humans as the new franchise to replace X-Men doesn't work because the X-Men have always been underdogs and they're prosecuted. The problem with the Inhumans is that they're a bunch of royalist racists and they, uh, and they lord it over a whole bunch of people and they're completely elitist and there is nothing sympathetic about them at all. So, uh, so basically, it's a, again, like Iron Fist and the Defenders, it's a show where the approach, the subject matter... And the way that they did it is just completely wrong and in the wrong direction. And so, and it's almost uh, all these three shows are like an abject lesson in how not to tell a story and how not to make a TV show. All right, I have two questions for you, Eddie. Yes. First of all, have you watched Punisher at all? Yes, and I think Punisher is actually the best of the Netflix shows next to Jessica Jones. Okay, because and have you uh, have you watched any of Runaways yet on Hulu? Yeah, I watched Runaways. I mean, it's okay. It's cute. Uh, it's cute. The first, uh, the pilot episode is reasonably faithful, like 70% faithful to the comic book. Okay. And the characters are fairly well drawn. The problem with the Runaways is that they don't run away. We're like six or seven episodes in, and they still haven't run away. It's like these kids discover, oh my God, our parents are, uh, our parents are evil murderers. Oh, should we do? Okay, let's stay home and figure out what we should do next. It shouldn't be, I mean, it sh it's not the Runaways. It should be called the stay-at-homes. <laughs> I've only watched the first three episodes of Runaways. I'm behind on that, too. But I was just curious if you liked any of the Marvel TV stuff that they've done this year. Or if it was just like, at, this episode was going to be called Addy Shits on Marvel TV 2017. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the question is perfectly, is perfectly fine. It doesn't do anything new, but it's fine. I, liked, I really liked Legion. Um, I was really impressed by the Punisher because you expected the Punisher to become like some horrible right-wing pro-gun violence thing, but instead it's an incredibly nuanced portrayal of Frank Castle as this guy who's completely broken and who's expecting to die, and it's a, and it's about and it's about PTSD and it's about war and it's about the corruption of private warfare and all that stuff, and it just does that stuff pretty uh, stuff pretty well. So that was a really pleasant surprise. You know, you know, which is a far cry from the Inhumans, Iron Fist, and Defenders, which are completely inept shows. Thank unfortunately, God. unfortunately, Addy just pretty much took my my <laughs> worst of and like said exactly what I was going to say. I I didn't hate Defenders as much as he did, but it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Like I said, if you had asked me the beginning of 2017 of uh, the three Marvel Netflix shows we are getting, we are getting Iron Fist, we are getting the Defenders, and we are getting a Punisher series for some reason. Which one are you think is going to be the best? I would have been, oh, hell yeah, Defenders is going to be freaking awesome. I never would have thought I would say, no, no, Punisher, the Punisher right. show I didn't think we actually needed was the best of the three. Yeah. Uh, the thing that, that says a lot about um, how much I personally disliked Inhumans is that I am six episodes in and I still haven't finished it mm. and I'm a Marvel completionist oh. uh, I, I, com I watch all of their stuff and like I said I know I'm behind on Runaways but I have a feeling I'll probably just end up binging the whole thing once they release the whole series on YouTube uh, on YouTube on a, on a Hulu but um, I, I again I it was very it was such a disappointment because one of the I, when I first started um, collecting issue by issue comics, the new Defenders series, right when uh, Anna Adelan was dropping into the middle of New York, uh, that was this would be twenty uh, fifth no 
later than that, probably more like 2013, I think, is when that series started. I don't even remember who was writing it, but I can picture the cover in my head. Um, had Inferno in it. This is when we realized that Miss um, Marvel was an Inhuman and she got Lockjaw as a BFF. Right around this time, that was actually one of the first series, one of the, uh, of a group of series that I actually started reading. So I've actually always really liked the Inhumans, and I've always really liked Medusa. I especially like Medusa, who hates Black Bolt and wants to kill him. Uh, so just everything about Inhumans was just I was I was trying so hard to be positive about that series, especially coming out of their San Diego. Um, their San Diego one, I was like, their, their panel, I was like, oh, you know, I mean, the hair doesn't look great, but when it's in motion, it doesn't look bad, and, you know, well, maybe it'll get better, you know, maybe it's just having pilot-itis, maybe it'll find its feet, and I'm, like I said, I'm a completionist, and I'm still like, I need to watch those last two episodes, don't I? Or I could do anything else. <laughs> and that says a lot, and I... Again, I didn't I didn't hate Iron Fist as much as Addie did, but I didn't like it as much as I wanted to. I didn't hate Defenders, but it was like it was less for me this year, it was less of being of hating of worse TV as it was disappointing TV for me. It was stuff that was that just came in and kind of let me down, and then there were other things that came in that really just made me excited about TV. Like, I was not expecting to like Legion at all. And then Legion came over and blew my goddamn mind. So it was, you know, it was kind of a weird year overall. I, I really enjoyed the third season of uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, but it was inconsistent and kind of ended on, uh, eh, that was episode was fine. I guess those rumors of a Christmas special didn't pan out. Um, and it was just, it was less of bad TV for me this year as it was disappointing TV. I, like I said, I had a lot of hopes for Inhumans. I had a lot of hope for Defenders and I had a lot of hope for Iron Fist. And at the end of the day, I was like, well, I didn't hate that, but I expected better and I wanted better. And I just, I, there there are so many shows out there. I don't have time to watch something that is inconsistent or not good. That's one of the reasons why I don't watch Walking Dead. I don't have the time in my life to invest in a show that isn't consistently good. And unless I'm already invested, which is why I'm still watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, yeah, I don't know. It was just... It was a year where I was let down by more stuff than I was... I hated stuff. Because anything that was bad, I just didn't bother to watch. Actually, it's, one other one other show all throughout there that I forgot about. It's kind of a genre show, and you're talking about black comedies. But sometimes when you don't have a decent writer, that it just it becomes more tragic. And that's Fox News. I keep thinking they keep recycling <sighs> the same kind of plot lines time and again. And I think that they keep kind of you know they keep implying that there's going to be some sort of a pivot, but it's just keep on no. the rehash. And I, I don't I don't really know where they're taking this thing, and I don't see that it's got legs. And eighteen, se- and eighteen seasons in, Bill, it's still the same damn thing. No kidding, no kidding. The well, they've got a contract. They're you know they've already got they've got a contract for four, but you never know. We can you know yeah. hope that it gets clipped early. Yeah, we're really hoping. Audience talk about tragedy actually. on TV. You want to talk about tragedy on TV? Can we talk about the tragedy that was Megyn Kelly's TV show? Oh <laughs> wow! I almost no, actually, I didn't feel bad for it at all in any way, shape, or form. No, I, I don't feel bad for it all either. I think it's been a tragic train wreck that's been hilarious to watch. Well, I know why they put that sort of stuff on TV because you remember how much sliders with the alternate reality is kind of popular. So they're trying to get this kind of mirror mirror universe thing going, but it just doesn't really register. I think yeah. <laughs> the expressions there is great. <laughs> Now, that would be interesting. We should just actually do those sometimes as reviews, but pretending it that it's just a fictional show. <laughs> we should we should review one of the hours of news on Fox News and just go, man, these storylines don't make any sense. It's like these guys aren't even based in reality. I don't know what's it's going kind of on. It's like the suspension of disbelief, but come on, really? <laughs> it's funny. On, on ESPN the other day, they had a segment where they broke down some, his, I don't remember what it was, but historical war. But they broke down the discussion like they were talking about a Sunday night football game. And it was one of the most interesting damn things I have ever heard. Really? Pure yeah. street history. It was the Ryan Rossillo show. And it just broke it down pure historical fact. But had, but went at it with the intensity of a – I was right. like, if you could market that shit, that would be fantastic. 
people would actually got. I I know I have my old roommate from college, and when I first moved out, is a huge history nerd. He's a sports nerd, and he's a lawyer. He would probably eat that shit up in a heartbeat. Yeah, fascinating. Yep. Cool. Any other dishonorable TV mentions that we should throw under the bus while we're sitting here? Um, just my only other thing: Powerless on NBC. Mm. Again, a disappointment because yeah. the idea of doing a how was DC this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really holy crap. It came, yeah, it it, went, you blink, you miss it. Oh, because it, it was, it was like, hey, we're a DC sitcom. No, you're just a cheesy sitcom who's trying to apply DC names to it to make it seem better. Right. And it had a great cast too. That's mm-hmm. what I think. In, it just, but it, it was painful after yeah. a while. Just it, but again, like you said, not bad, but a big disappointment. Well, they changed the premise completely by the time yeah. we got the pilot. So. I, I, I wish I could have seen that original pilot at San Diego. I, I like, yeah. I want, I always mean to go to the night of the pilots at Comic Con. Every year I mean to go to that in Hull H on Wednesday nights. They'll screen a bunch of the pilots. And I always mean to go to that. And every year I never end up going. And I always, that, when they came out and said they had shot so much of, reshot so much of Powerless and they weren't going to make it the show it was. I wish I would have seen that original pilot. Yeah. The thing that powerless that annoys me is that I really hope it didn't kill the idea of a damage control show. Yeah. Because that's like all I want in my life. It's still in production, isn't it? It's one of those. Yeah, it's in production. Sure. <laughs> Got it. Got it. One of those forever in production shows. I want a single camera sitcom. Set in the Marvel Universe following Damage Control. Damage Control is now canon because it was in Spider-Man. Make it happen. Damage yep. Control was its own con- it was its own series. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying that now it canonically exists oh, yeah. in the Marvel yeah, Universe. totally. Anybody else? Good. We good? All right. We got one more of these to do, and then I'll let you guys go to sleep because it's late by my standards. Uh, my name is Caitlin Booth. I'm the head film writer here at Bleeding Cool. You can follow me at Katie's Movies on Twitter. Bill. Uh, you can catch me online at Bill RW and the number three. Ray, please. You can catch me on Instagram at Old Man Geek. And Addy. And I'm on Twitter at Look at Fools. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Later.